Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this video, what we got to do is we're given these limits over here and they represent the derivative of f of x when x is equal to a. And based on these limits here, based on their formats, what we have to do is we have to state f of x and the a value. This is a pretty common communication sort of question that can come up. So for these limits, we're actually going to be using both definitions that we've went over. So just to do a review, the first definition, the most popular one of a derivative is limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. That would be the derivative of a function f of x when x is equal to a in its general format where we don't know what the function is or the a value but that's the general format. And then number two, the alternative definition is limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. So if you're not using this alternative definition at all, or you haven't been taught it, you're just using this one, then you can ignore the limits that are going to be in this for, uh, format. Notice how you can tell before even starting that these two limits are in this format, and then this, uh, these two limits, 3 and 4, are in this format here. But what I'm actually going to do with uh, these two limits is after we figure out what's f of x and a, I'm going to take these limits and put it in this format as well. Just in case you're not using this definition, you're only using this one, you could see how these would be stated with that definition as well. Okay, so we're kind of like going backwards here. So usually, let's say that I gave you a function f of x equals, let's say, x squared at an x value, and I wanted to find the derivative at an x value of 1. Well, if I use this here with the first definition, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h or f of 1 plus h. The a value is 1 in this case, so we'd have 1 plus h squared. Right? We're plugging in 1 plus h into this function minus f of 1, which is just 1. Right? 1 squared is just 1. This would be all over h. Or the limit as x approaches 1, if I use this definition of f of x, which is x squared minus f of a, or f of 1 in this case, which is 1, all over x minus a, which is x minus 1. Right, so this is an example. So what's happening is instead of being given this and we have to state this, we're given these limits and we have to go backwards and figure out from the format of these limits what's the function, what's that a value. Okay, so here, notice that this limit is actually in this kind of same format. So kind of hard to tell, but obviously the a value you could tell because it's f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Notice that it's 3 plus h here. So this is like the a plus h. So from here, we could tell that the a value is 3. And then if the a value is 3, notice that we're taking that expression 3 plus h and then we're squaring it. And so you could tell that the function is x squared. And notice here we have f of a, which would be f of 3. 3 squared is 9. So if you ignore this, if you take this and put it into this format, you would end up getting this limit right here. Okay, so sometimes it takes a little trial and error to figure it out. But this one is pretty simple, where we could see a plus h squared. So we know the function is x squared, right, because f of a plus h, if f of x is x squared, f of a plus h is going to be a plus h squared. Then the a value is 3, and then that a value of 3 also um, is uh, pans out over here because 3 squared is 9, and we're subtracting that f of a right there, right? Hopefully you got that. Not the best uh, explanation perhaps, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of going backwards. It's trial and error. It's, Again, it's hard to um, 
there's no real like algebraic way to do this. You just got to kind of look at it, relate it, and then hopefully come up with the correct answer. Now, limit as h approaches 0, the square root of 16 plus h minus 4 all over h, we could be pretty confident that what's the a value? It's going to be the 16 here, right? First off, this is in that first format. I'm going to erase this so there's less stuff on the board. It's in this first definition format, so f of a plus h, a plus h. So we could be confident that the a value is 16. And then what's the function here? Well, notice the function is the square root of x. Okay, because if we had f of, if f of x is the square root of x, f of a plus h in general, it's going to be the square root of a plus h, 16 plus h. And then if a is, in fact, 16, what's f of 16 going to give us? It's going to give us 4. Right, so we're going to have f of 16 plus h, which is the square root of 16 plus h, minus f of 16, right, f of a, which is 4, and this is going to be all over h. And so that right there is the answer for this second limit. And then limit 3 and 4, notice that it's in this format here the second definition because we have the limit as x approaches something, x approaching something, not h approaching zero. And when it's in this format, this is actually a lot easier to deal with than this one. Why? Because notice that the a value and the function is already stated in that limit. So we just have to look at this. Notice as x approaches 3, as x approaches a, the a value is 3. And then f of x is just this 2 to the power of x, right? And so that's the answer. The a value is 3, f of x is 2 to the power of x, right? And that's the answer for number 3. Now, what if this, um, this function and this a value is stated in this format? Then we would have what? The limit as h approaches 0 of f of 3 plus h, f of 3 plus h would be 2 to the power of 3 plus h minus f of a, or f of 3, which is 2 to the power of 3, which would be 8 all over h. So if we were given this limit, it would be a little tougher to figure out that the function is 2 to the power of x and the a value is 3. Not too much tougher, but it's not stated, the function and the a value are not stated uh, in that format. You got to do a little bit more work. But again, it's still not too bad. You would notice that we have a plus h here, right? So the a value is 3, function is 2 to the power of x, and then 2 to the power of 3 does indeed give us 8. So if this was in that first format, it would be stated like that. And then again, uh, number four, it's in this format. So again, the a value is this negative one. And then f of x is this entire thing right here. So it's x minus five over x plus two. And that's the answer for number four. Remember, we just have to state f of x and a. We don't have to solve these limits. Uh, now, if this if these parameters were put into this first definition, then it would be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of negative 1 plus h. So we'd have negative 1 plus h minus 5 over negative 1 plus h plus 2 minus, um, if I plug in negative 1 here, it would be... Um, negative 6. f of negative 1 would be negative 6, so that's why there's a positive here. It's minus negative 6, which would give us positive 6 all over h. So it would be a little tougher to spot with uh, that limit versus the function being explicitly given in uh, this limit. And then it would be even tougher if um, 
if we expanded this, like if we simplified it, if we had like h negative 1 minus 5 would be negative 6. If we had like h minus 6, negative 1 plus 2 would give us uh, 1. So we'd have h plus 1 there. Then it could get really complicated. Um, delta will give that though. So usually you'll be in this kind of format or in this. And then if it's in this format, you could see a plus h. So the a value is negative 1. So we know we're plugging in for the x value there in those two brackets. So the function would have been x minus 5, x plus 2. Right? So kind of weird questions. Again, you're given the limit, and now you got to go backwards, state the function, and state the a value.